Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this will be another Java video. So today we're gonna talk about Mina. So this is like the second video. On the first video, I was showing how uh, we can build a TCP server. And now we're gonna add SSL uh, support, right? So let's get started. So I have <clears throat> another idea project. This is a, a bit different than the other one. It, it doesn't have the unit tests uh, in the client, right? So this is just the server. And I changed the server to have TCP support. So quick uh, catch up for those who didn't watch the first video. I'm using Maven here in sense of dependencies. I just have the dependence for Mina Core. I'm having Xstream so I can deal with XML. Then I have um, logging dependencies. Um, and that's it in sense of dependencies. In sense of the structure, I have a POSU, it's like the date response, which is like a container type that has a date inside. And this is how uh, we're gonna, this is the, uh, like the DTO that we're gonna return as our contract, right, for our, our time operation. Then I have the TCP server, where um, I we use a sector um, in, in uh, is, is a Neo socket, so we can create a connection. Um, then there is a chain. <clears throat> Mina also has the chain of responsibility pattern. Um, I have a different class here that I didn't have on the other uh, code, the other POC, where I'm adding SSL support. Then there's the chains uh, for, for logging and codec. And finally, I add my handler and some configs like the read buffer size, idle timeout, and we start listing connections on uh, this part. So the part now, I changed the part. Port now in 9903. Um, my handler is exactly the same for those who watch the other video. So I have this time server handler where I still see it extreme. I just set an alias so I can print um, the POJO with a better formatting. Uh, and then the, the real magic happens on message receive, right? So this is like a callback. Every time there's a new message, Mina gonna run here. And then I'm gonna check, okay, if there's a quit tag, I'm gonna quit the TCP session. If there's a time tag, I'm gonna create a date response, transform in XML and return. If it's options, you know, we're just gonna write the options. Otherwise, I'm gonna write invalid comment, right? And that's that's pretty much it, right? Now let's look the SSL. Well, so the SSL part, first you need to create keys, all right? So ideally, um, you want to have the keys signed by someone. But here, since it's a POC just showing the capability to you guys, it's totally fine, but I generate the keys myself and I self-sign it, right? So we're gonna use OpenSSL and then you can create a um, server CA key, right? With that, uh, you can create a pen file and then um, you can convert the pen file, uh, the key into a P12 file. Then we can import the, um, the, P, uh, the, the P12 in a key store, right? And finally, uh, we, we can create a trust store, right? So in the end of the day, we need a key store and a trust store. So if you run all these commands in your machine, it will work. Since this is no real keys, I mean, the keys are real, but you know, it's not it's not uh, public keys or keys that are used in anywhere. It's just my, my dummy keys I generated, I version on Git. But you know, in real life, in production, you don't want to version these things on Git ever, right? But um, for this case, it's fine, all right? So the keys are here. You can just use my keys or you can generate your own keys by doing this. Um, then um, we we can look at the SSL code, right? So for the SSL, I have this SSL contact generator where I receive the chain from Mina and I create a filter and then I have this filter to the chain. And to create a filter, inside of the filter, we need to have SSL context, right? And SSL context, is a standard Java net uh, SSL object where we basically pointing out to the server key store and trust store in our file system and setting passwords. And again, uh, this is the POC, so that's why I have the hard coded passwords here, but this is a very bad security practice. You shouldn't be doing that, um, you know, in production in real life, but for a POC, it's totally fine. And then, you know, we just load uh, this object on a SSL context and we return SSL context, right? So if you take a look here, SSL context, we use a factory to create and that's it, okay? And then uh, we can run the server and now uh, you're gonna see that, um, 
you know, Telnet will not work anymore because Telnet doesn't work with SSL. And uh, you can see here that um, my uh, SSL is added successfully. Uh, the, the code is lying, like uh, if you try to do this, it will not work at all, right? But okay, how, how I test them? Well, um, there is this other tool called OpenSSL. And with OpenSSL, you can open a client with that, right? So I have that on the README as well, so you guys can copy from there. But like, if I put it here, and then you can see I just uh, connected. And I can see some information about the certificate I generate, right? Um, so if I go all the way to the bottom, right? And now I can put my XML message, right? So I'll say, what time is now, right? Oh, oops, invalid uh, options. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. I think on this version of the server, um, let me look the handler. I reversed, uh, oh yeah. So you see, uh, it's empty tag. Uh, so it's here. There you go. We get our answer, right? And we are rolling, guys. We are working, uh, it's working with SSL. So that's it for today. I hope you guys liked this video. Uh, see you next time. Take care. Cheers.